Protein synthesis is the process by which your, your cells make protein. And it begins in the nucleus. So here we have the nuclear membrane. So this is the nucleus of the cell. We have the DNA. Um, and the first thing that has to happen in protein synthesis is the DNA has to uncoil, very similar to replication. The hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases have to break, and the DNA starts to uncoil. Once that happens, mRNA is going to begin to form by binding RNA nucleotides to the unwound strand of DNA. So we get RNA forming. And once that strand of RNA is complete, we have a mature strand of RNA that unbinds to the DNA and begins to move out of the nucleus. So in terms of letters, if this is my strand of DNA, let's say we have A, T, C, G, G, C. In this process, RNA would form that complements that strand of DNA. So the nucleotide that would bind to the nucleotide of A in the DNA um, for RNA is going to be not a T but a U um, because in RNA we have certain bases that are different than DNA. In DNA we have the bases A, T, C, and G. In RNA we have the bases A, U, C, and G. So if I was going to write the complementary strand of this RNA or of this DNA strand, the first one would be a U that's bound to this A. And then because RNA has an adenine in it, we would have an adenine bound to that thymine. And then guanine would bind to that cytosine. Cytosine would bind to the guanine. Cytosine again would bind to the guanine, and our last one is a cytosine which needs a guanine to bind to it. So this would be my strand of RNA that has bound to the strand of DNA. Now, because this is RNA forming in the nucleus, we call it mRNA. That's messenger RNA because it's going to leave the nucleus and take the message to the ribosomes. This whole process um, of forming a strand of RNA by unwinding DNA is called transcription. So that word transcription, this is the first process of protein synthesis. The second process of protein synthesis is called translation. Translation happens outside of the nucleus in the cytoplasm. And so the process of translation <clears throat> is going to happen in the ribosome. So here we have the ribosome down here. It's sort of egg-shaped. And what happens is that mRNA strand that formed in the nucleus is actually going to leave the nucleus and we have it magnified down here and once it leaves the nucleus it's going to find a ribosome and it's going to um, bind to the ribosome and once it's bound to the ribosome we're going to have some tRNA that comes and binds to the mRNA. Our tRNA is right here. It's kind of um, shaped like a fork or I think it looks kind of like a T. So in a tRNA strand, we have several different parts. We have the amino acid, which is this little spot right here, um, and that's going to bind together with other amino acids to make a protein. And then the other part of the tRNA is the anticodon. And the anticodon is this um, sequence of three nucleotides at the bottom of the tRNA strand. So that's called an anticodon. The reason it's called an anticodon is because it's going to have to match to a codon on the mRNA strand. And a codon on the mRNA strand is a sequence of three nucleotides. So we have a codon right there, a codon right here, a codon right here. So because these are codons, the opposite that the opposite nucleotides they're going to bind to them are called anticodons. So in mRNA we have codons. In tRNA we have anticodons. Okay. So in the process of transcription, we're going to have the <clears throat> strand of mRNA into the ribosome. The tRNA is also going to bind inside the ribosome, and the anticodon and the codon are going to bind together right here with hydrogen bonds. And then we're going to have another tRNA that comes and binds right next to it. 
And when those tRNAs bind next to each other, you're going to get a bond that forms between the amino acids of those tRNA strands. And after a while, you'll end up getting a buildup of amino acids that makes a protein chain. So this is our protein chain right here. Um, and once one of those amino acids has bound, so you can see that this tRNA has, is leaving, that means that its amino acid has bound. So once one has bound, then the tRNA that's now without an amino acid is going to leave and go find another uh, amino acid. So what's going to happen here is this tRNA is going to bind its amino acid over here. This whole chain will get moved over when the amino acid binds to the single amino acid right here. And then this tRNA will leave and go find another amino acid um, to be a part of the process again. So, just a little overview, we've got the mRNA strand with tRNA strands binding to it, anticodons binding to codons, and while the tRNA is bound to the mRNA, it's going to form a bond between the amino acids, and eventually we'll get a whole chain of protein, and then that protein will be complete. So, in terms of letters, we've got our mRNA strand here, now we're going to form we're going to figure out what tRNA strands would bind to this one. So here we have two codons. In our tRNA, we're going to have some anticodons that are going to want to bind. And here's our amino acids on the end of the tRNA strands. So for our tRNA, U is going to bind to A. A would bind to U. G would bind to C. C would bind to G, C would bind to G, and G would bind to C. So these would be the tRNA strands that would want to bind to this mRNA. And once they've bound, these two amino acids would stick together, and then we would end up with a two amino acid chain protein, kind of like that. And that's the whole purpose of this process is to form a protein, which is a chain of amino acids. In reality, it would be much longer than two strands, so you would keep going. It would be a very long strand of amino acids to make a protein. But basically, that's the process. We have two steps. We have transcription and translation, and all together, that's how proteins are made.